People think it's pie in the sky that it's too good it to be true. Will the transfer improve the repair service? What about the rents? The pensioners in our area are wondering if it's going to be privatisation. Why can't the government just write this debt off for the council? Those are just some of the issues raised by the proposal to transfer more than 80,000 council houses to the Glasgow Housing Association. And in the vote coming up, you decide whether or not that happens. It's fair to say that a lot of housing in the city needs a lot of work done to bring it up to a decent standard. But the scale of that problem means that it's going to take hundreds of millions of pounds to do it. The council's been struggling for years to find a solution to this. Now, together with the Scottish Executive and the Glasgow Housing Association, they've come up with this proposal. So, is this the way ahead for Glasgow? Well, that is exactly what you have to decide. As things stand at the moment, the council is £900 million in debt. Now what that means is that for every one pound of rent received, 40 pence goes to paying off that debt. If the transfer takes place, the UK Treasury say they will write that off, they'll wipe the slate clean. And GHA say they'll then be able to pour all of the rent into better services, maintenance, repairs and an investment in upgrading. But what about the City Council? Why is it backing the transfer? I put that question to Council Leader Charlie Gordon. Council houses in Glasgow need lots of investment. Too many houses don't have double glazing or central heating. There are too many damp houses. We don't have enough money uh, to remedy all these problems in a reasonable period of time. And so we need a new approach. OK, sounds perfectly reasonable, but a lot of people will be listening and will say, well, look, if the GHA can borrow the, the, the funding for the investment, why can't you? Well, the government's policy is uh, community ownership, uh, by which I mean housing associations which are managed by uh, local tenants, and their borrowings uh, don't count against uh, the national debt. Mm -hmm. So there are major issues of uh, national government policy involved here, but of course we support uh, tenant control, and we've tried to do that as a landlord in our own right, but this is an opportunity for people to have their houses modernised and for them to be in control of the management of their houses. I mean, I think one of the biggest criteria within all of that is the rent guarantee. Are you happy that that's going to happen? Absolutely. There's a, a good deal on rents on the table in this plan, an even better deal than the council uh, asked for from the GHA. At the moment, under the council, because of the debt burden, rents have risen well above the level of inflation in the past 10 years. But under this transfer plan, there will be uh, rent controls for the next 30 years after transfer. Rents won't rise any more than 1% above the, the level of annual inflation. That is something which the Council would find impossible uh, to guarantee even for a fraction of 30 years. If the transfer goes ahead, the GHA plans to spend around £1.8 billion over the first 10 years, repairing, improving, modernising and building new homes. One of the first priorities is to provide warm, dry homes for all tenants. So by 2006, all houses that need them and have a long-term life will have new or improved heating systems and insulation. By 2008, this work will be consolidated by dealing with the external fabric of the buildings to make sure that the central heating is affordable and energy efficient. This would include replacing windows, cladding, roofs and gutters. In just over 10 years from transfer, all houses that have a long-term life will be fully modernised, with improved external doors and or security locks, improved internal joinery, modern kitchens and bathrooms. Some of the existing housing stock is beyond improving, so the GHA proposal also includes plans for selective demolition of almost 11,000 houses around the city. That will be offset though by an extensive new build programme agreed by the Scottish Executive and the City Council. And that will lead to 13,000 new affordable rented houses being built by 2012. And about 3,000 of those will be built directly by GHA. 
Taken together, the GHA's investment programme and the building of these new social rented homes is expected to create around 3,000 new jobs. The GHA is run by a management committee which is made up of 21 unpaid volunteers and that includes nine tenants who actually make up the largest group on the committee. Maria Fife, Sandra Forsyth and Sam Harper are members of the management committee of the GHA. Maria, very direct question, is this just privatisation by the back door? It certainly isn't any kind of privatisation. If I thought it was, I wouldn't have anything to do with it. This is in fact opening out social ownership of housing to tenant control and I'm fully in favour of it. Sam, how can this work if it's not for profit? The mechanisms within Glasgow Housing Association are such that we have no shareholders who will be getting paid dividends. So therefore, we have the ability to reinvest all finances and all resources back into our communities. Sandra, are you happy that the GHA will be able to deliver on its promises? I'm very satisfied. And the reason I'm saying that is that we've been heavily involved in it and tenants for once have had a say in this issue. How do tenants get involved if they want to? Tenants uh, through local housing or organisations who will have their own local participation policy will invite tenants to become as involved as they themselves are happy to be. Margaret Curran is a Glasgow MSP and the Scottish Executive Minister responsible for housing. What exactly is the Scottish Executive's role in this? We've got a financial commitment to Glasgow. We recognise the needs of Glaswegians and the needs of the city. We want to put investment into the house, housing so we actually begin to get it right. But also we have a different kind of role and that's about regulation. We have to make sure that this transfer works and that the new landlord is an effective and appropriate landlord. We have a very robust system of regulation that will be put into place after transfer and that you know the GHA will be accountable through Community Scotland directly to ministers itself. So we'll make sure this actually does deliver for the tenants of Glasgow. Facing such a big decision, you're entitled to ask, what's in it for me? Bob Allen is the chief executive of the GHA, so we've invited tenants to meet him, ask him those questions. Let's go and see what he has to say. We're all sitting in houses with suspended repairs right now from the council because they don't have the money. Well, if the, the stock transfer goes through, all those suspended repairs start being done right away. Our commitment is very clear. Uh, day one after transfer, we want to reinstate suspended repairs. Now, I know for a lot of tenants that's been a major, major frustration. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about the big stuff, it's about the wee things that tenants mm -hmm. uh, have not been able to, to have done. And we recognise how important that is. So our overall commitment and tenants are demanding it is for a significant increase in repairs performance and the quality of that service. On the new build, it's very encouraging, um, I would say for any Glaswegian, to hear that we're going to get new build within our city when we see what's run about us. But I would also like to ask, Bob, will local people um, be involved in the design of the house? And the short answer is yes. They need to be. Uh, yeah. They're the people that are going to live in them. Yeah. And we all know the mistakes of the past where, um, if you talk to women, they always say, there's always a male architect that designed this kitchen. Um, so they're the people that live in them, they need to be involved in it. One issue that, that people are definitely interested in is what's, what's the GHA policy on antisocial neighbours? What's going to happen there? We will be deploying two citywide teams, 24 hour fast response units, try and move very quickly uh, with the support of police and other uh, agencies to try and deal with problems of uh, antisocial behaviour. I'd like to ask a question regarding the late shows. Um, are they going to be given the opportunity um, to deal with their own priorities? Um, we've always said that uh, the LHOs have got to have the capacity to deal in local circumstances with local needs, uh, so local uh, solutions are required to these, these kinds of problems. Um, so they will have that flexibility and focus. People right now have succession on their homes. Yep. Will they still retain succession on their homes? We've had a look at that and what we've done is amended our tenancy agreement to reinstate those succession rights that tenants enjoy company. So 
tenants will not suffer any disadvantage in terms of their current succession rights. I'd just like to know uh, what your commitment would be for local, getting local people involved to get them back to work. We've consistently said that there are huge economic benefits in this project to Glasgow, to Glaswegians, but we also need to connect those opportunities to people that need them most. Uh, so <coughs> we've got a detailed action plan uh, which identifies a range of projects and one of the things that we'll be starting to talk to LHOs about is how we can deliver those employment uh, and training opportunities at a local level. If you're a tenant, what will be the single biggest difference for you if the transfer goes ahead? I think the single biggest difference will be improvements to people's homes and what we are prepared to do is invest £5.6 billion worth of investment over the next 30 years to give people homes that they can be proud of. Will that mean a, a, a massive hike? in people's rents? No, no, it won't. I mean, there was a legal guarantee there for five years previously. We've extended that to eight years. And what we're saying is that we are confident and we have planned for no more than rate inflation plus 1% between years 10 right through to 30. So we see no reason for substantial increases. Hope that's answered some of the questions which have been on your mind. You can get more detailed information on all of the issues in this Stage 2 document. Or you can free phone the tenant information line on the number coming up at the end of this programme. Now remember, this is not a done deal. But the outcome of the vote will have a huge impact on Glasgow's future. So use your vote, have your say. I'm very well aware that tenants in Glasgow have had promises before. I think some of them would say not all those promises have been delivered. It's now a time, I think, in Scottish politics where we actually deliver on what we say we're going to deliver on. If we want to improve the quality of life for themselves and their children, then get out there and vote. I wouldn't be a party uh, to putting this plan before Glasgow's tenants if I didn't think there was a great chance that this will happen and happen in a reasonably quick uh, timescale. And, and people will have to vote yes, uh, ultimately it's their decision.